Hey there, before we jump into this amazing jam-packed episode, I just wanted to let you know that today is the final day to join our 30-day shred challenge. This is 30 days within our 60-day challenge, and it's not too late to send us a message with the keyword challenge to our Instagram, which is Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T. I promise you, you do not want to be on the sidelines for this. We have amazing prizes. We have daily criteria, and just overall, you're going to feel absolutely incredible. Just think about how many amazing things you can accomplish over 30 days, and when you start building those habits, how much weight you can lose, how great you're going to feel, and everything that comes with just showing up for yourself day to day, having accountability, having prizes in store. There's just no better time to start than now. And all you have to do is send us a message with the keyword challenge to Instagram. Once again, Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T. And I can't wait to see some of you take us up on this opportunity. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Fit, Healthy, and Most of All Happy podcast. I'm your coach and host, Josh, here with his co-host and co-coach, KG, and I'm happy to be here. And it's Motivation Monday, so we're here to get you motivated, fired up, and we just want to say thank you for tuning in with me and Kyle today, and we're excited to bring a superb episode. We have phenomenal questions, so we thank you for that. If ever you'd like to submit questions for our podcast or you'd like to see more behind the scenes, you'd like to see any other value we add, we highly recommend following our Instagram as a companion to this podcast. They pair quite nicely. And if you love the value we give here, you're going to love the value we also give there. Feel free to shoot us a message with any questions you have. Chances are if you have it, other people have it too, and we would love to answer it on the podcast. And that's where we got these questions from. So go ahead and follow us on Instagram. Instagram's at Colossus Fit, like Kyle said in the intro. You also have a phenomenal opportunity to jump in for the tail end of this challenge. And if you're looking to see serious change leading into the new year, start now. Show yourself if you're serious don't put it off like you do every other year because if you want to see change you got to do what's uncomfortable and i really love the adage of the second it's uncomfortable to jump and you get that feeling like oh, i don't know if i should do it. it's hard that's when you got to just jump into it or else you're going to get paralyzed you're never going to do it we used to always go like cliff jumping into the water and people who just went up there and like this is scary and did it always were like so happy they did it they do it over and over whereas other people would think about it they'd edge forward and then they wouldn't do it and then it would happen eight times and they'd be there 30 minutes and it'd be so built up in their head so what i'm getting at is don't do this with your fitness don't say i'm going to start eventually once the situation is better once i'm done school once my kids are older there's no perfect time you got to work with what's in front of you fitness should be part of your life so just jump into it let us do the hard work and give you everything you need for your fitness health and nutrition we'll take care all that just dm us challenge and even if you're not looking to take advantage of this incredible opportunity make sure to follow us there for other great content but enough of me blabbering so the first question we have our primary question for the day is what are the most effective ways to measure progress beyond the scale i find my weight goes up and down a ton and i don't just want to rely on that for my progress so this is a fantastic question and i wanted to start off by addressing yes the scale will consistently go up and down. I definitely don't want to discredit that as a measurement tool because it can be very valuable. I do find that when we calculate it by uh, average, so we have all of our clients using a spreadsheet, um, you know, ourselves as well, we, we like to just calculate the average because no matter what, if it goes up and down, it's still a great tool. Um, so I just want to say that because I know sometimes people will be like, oh, well, I'm not going to use it at all. I'm just going to use photos and photos are great. But uh, yeah, anyways, so it comes to what's called an NSV. So that just is a non-scale victory. So there's a ton of different things to address. Um, my first thing, and like I wanted to say is just like clothes fitting better is one of the greatest things. Like we can go one by one here, we'll have a conversation, just kind of go back and forth. But I will say clothes fitting better is one of the greatest things. And you'll notice that measurements, like with your clothes fitting better, your measurements will start to improve. And that's going to be probably one of the greatest tools that I wanted to start off with. Yeah, like seeing that change of your clothing, it's funny, we actually had one of our clients say to one of our coaches recently how, uh, Coach Lauren, how one of the bad things about the coaching program, one thing they weren't aware of is that they need to get new clothes because <laughs> their clothes are fitting them differently. Obviously, as you build muscle and you lose fat, you're not going to fit in your same clothes and you're going to be able to take advantage of maybe doing a little bit of an upgrade in those pants that you got that are super baggy and they've always been that way. They might fit super, super big on you, but that's one of the beauties that comes alongside it. And these are all amazing 
wins. Like as Kyle said, these non-scale victories are huge. I think one of the best ones is when people around you notice. So when you're looking at yourself day in, day out, it's very hard to see change because it happens so progressively. And we're looking at ourselves a million times a day, not actually, but you get my point. Whereas perhaps your mother, your friends, your buddies, your gym partner, they're like, whoa, you're looking better here. You're looking leaner. People will pick up onto it first and that's always a great sign that what you're doing is working especially in the example of when you're beginning a cut i love that because i have a client recently and she had been saying to us like i'm noticing i'm getting so many compliments from people and she was talking about the scale and she's using kg as well so it you don't see like that bigger change with kg it's like you know maybe half a kg loss which may not sound like a lot but it is still incredible and she had said to us she was just like so many because we complimented her as well her name's amanda shout out to her and she said she was getting so many compliments. I'm like, that's amazing. Like people are noticing, like you probably won't notice like drastic changes with the scale, right? She's focusing on body composition. She's focused on, you know, just a you know, nice, slow fat loss, which is awesome. But that's not going to be, it's going to be a great tool, but that's not going to be the biggest difference maker and the thing that she should just focus on day to day. But it's those people who are noticing around you and you'll, they'll notice way before, like they, you'll, they'll, they'll notice weeks before you ever will. And even sometimes like you may not even notice yourself and sometimes you have to convince yourself you're doing so well but I think it's so important to take those compliments from people and really appreciate that because yeah like they notice the progress so I thought that was so well said and obviously on top of that photos like day and night like you should 100% be taking them at least once a month um, in the same spot and one thing I want to say when it comes to measuring progress whether it's measurements um, the scale photos is try to keep it as consistent as possible um, it's always nice to switch up the scenery if because it could give you a nice boost like if you start with your first photo um, you know relaxed before the gym on a Monday morning and then like your next set is going to be a Thursday after a pump and you were at the beach and you're tanned up and all that other stuff like you want to keep things as consistent as possible but those photos in the same spot as consistent as possible will show you so much and it makes such a big difference yeah and for me past that even like looking at all these different metrics of progress is the best because scale is the most common one and typically even with the scale it's easy to get discouraged because all week you can see that wake trend down you do everything perfect you bank a great day you wake up you're excited to see your new low weigh in you hop in on there and you're like oh I've gone up four pounds. Like I actually was perfect yesterday. I was super active. Maybe you want a super long walk at night. And that four pounds can be really disheartening. It can be discouraging because you know you've done everything right in this case. Keep in mind how many things impact a scale. So in that example I used, if you did a ton of exercise late at night, you're probably going to use a lot of fluid to really kind of replenish you. It's going to be a lot of glycogen that's going to be stored in your muscles. Perhaps you needed to eat later in the day and you save some calories after that walk and you had a lot of salt right before you went to bed. All these things can cause a big pop up in weight. And that's why I don't like putting too much stock in one weigh in. And all too often, it's easy for people to weigh in all week and just find the one weigh in they like. Or maybe you weigh in on Sundays and then Saturday you just starve yourself to get a low weigh-in but the rest of the week is garbage it's not productive and that's why we average out the weigh-ins i put the most stock in that average of the weigh-ins and i try to weigh in every single day because that'll account for the bad days as well as the good days and that will also hold you accountable to actually be consistent in your progress because easy to manipulate these numbers if you only weigh in tuesdays fridays and sundays like i said the day before you can do a lot of things to alter that number you can stop eating at 3 p.m like it's very easy to manipulate the weight on a scale and that's why fighters are able to lose like 20, 25 pounds within the matter of a week because they're manipulating that number. They're not losing true weight and their goal is to get back up to their base weight after all of this. So scale is a phenomenal scale or it is a phenomenal scale for progress. Scale is a scale of progress. Um, but past that, like other people noticing photos are absolutely fantastic. I like to take monthly photos if possible. And then of course, measurements this is something I do every single month because the measurements do not lie. If I see like my arms are getting smaller, my waist is getting bigger. I'm slacking, my composition's falling out, maybe I'm getting too much fat. And this gives me a position to reflect on, especially too, if you wanna go like for the whole Vitruvian men and aesthetics, like theoretically your bicep measurement as a man should be the same as your calf. So that's always good motivation to keep account to these things. Or if your goal is to grow your glutes, you can really be mindful of that measurement. You can actually make sure that's scaling because photos can lie between posing, between lighting, between a million different factors. And that's where like, to me, measurements are phenomenal, but everything does have its drawback. If I 
hold the measuring tape really loose, I can manipulate the number. If I flex, I can manipulate the number. If I do a workout before. So the goal is to keep these things as consistent as possible, to be honest with them and not to manipulate them in your favor because they're not used to make you feel bad about yourself. They're used to help you progress forward and actually see more progress in your journey. Yeah, and the last thing I want to talk about is like the things that a lot of people don't mention in the industry obviously we love everything that we had mentioned are, are great to monitor especially the aesthetics and your body fat changes and your physique changes but within fitness there's going to be so many other things that you'll you'll notice and i think you should really start to appreciate um first thing would just be everyday tasks getting easier this is a great thing that especially parents especially people who are you know just uh, in busy work and you just you notice the stairs you're climbing the stairs and it's starting to get easier because you're getting stronger and your cardio is getting better and you've lost weight like everyday tasks you know can be one of the greatest victories that a lot of people don't appreciate um you know even just simply getting stronger you can start to notice you carrying your kid and just like feeling like you're you know a more of a, a beast carrying them and you can hold them for longer like I really want to encourage you to pay attention to these different day-to-day -day things. Um, it could be sleeping better. Your energy could be a lot better because you've been working out. You've been eating better. Um, there's so many different things. I could list about 10 different ones for this, but this is what a lot of people forget about because they're so focused on like having shredded abs and just like, you know, like body fat and all this other stuff, which, you know, is, uh, is an important thing to consider, especially if you're very driven and you have some big goals. But this next thing that I mentioned, like so many people miss out on it. Like they'll have so many great things going for them. You know, their cardio is getting better, whatever it is, and they don't even notice it. So yeah, I just wanted to mention that. I think it's so underrated and that's the last thing I have for this specific question. But yeah, start finding different ways to track your progress. Even I love the example of a DEXA scan. So we're, we actually have a DEXA scan booked. We've made an effort to do that biannually, but we're actually maybe perhaps looking at doing it quarterly. It's just, it's in the back of my mind, right? When I look at those numbers and you have to go in there and say, yeah, you've lost muscle and you gained fat. That is not fun. When you go in there and they say you've gained muscle and lost fat, you're progressing phenomenally. That's going to fire you up. And that's where like creating artificial deadlines and events can be so phenomenal. Like perhaps there was a time you're going on vacation and you were so dialed in for this event. You can manipulate that by doing different things. Kyle actually just started a challenge today, which I can almost guarantee you will force him to end up hitting 315, even though it's uncomfortable on the bench press. But by creating these artificial dates, it puts a lot more seriousness behind it. It puts more weight towards it. And um, that's actually like one of my favorite things to do. So actual metrics at scale, I find other people looking at things. I have my clients fill out a spreadsheet, which I review weekly and that holds them accountable. I send mine to Kyle every single week. There's just like a million different things I do in the week to hold myself accountable to my actions. I've been doing a weekly rhythm register for over 10 years now, which I got from this book, The Compound Effect. And I actually grade like all the things I wanna do in a week. So logging accuracy is seven out of seven days. I should be hitting that. Then there's other things like 30 minutes of cardio, which I'd like to do six out of seven days. And if I do it seven out of seven, I get like one extra point there. But if I do less, I'm losing points. Then there's abs. I try to do abs two times a week. I'm not perfect, but this kind of holds me accountable to it. Cause when I see I haven't done it, I'm like, oh, I got to do it. Really intensive calf sessions. It's not fun. I don't want to prioritize it like most people, but I put in my weekly rhythm register. And that's another thing I send to Kyle because it's a review for myself and other people. And like doing that also is a metric of progress of creating that self accountability. Obviously it's just better if you have a coach that's hounding you and is forcing you in to what you need to do. And that's where we absolutely excel. But these are some other types of artificial accountability I create for myself. Honestly, it makes such a big difference. Pay attention to these things and don't just say, I'm going to like, think about it but like actually spend time journaling actually spend time creating these different systems because knowledge as josh always says knowledge is only power when applied don't be someone who says you're going to make these changes you're going to think about it you're going to try it out but never take action and uh yeah great first question i hope these tips helped you in some way or another all right now that we've done our primary question thank you for that we hope that was incredibly helpful we are going to jump into our quotes and take it away kyle this one hit me. This one hit me like a rock. Um, I'm sure it'll resonate with Josh in one way or another and a lot of you as well. Eric Thomas just spit fire and I had to listen to about 17 times over. He said in a very intense way, but he was basically saying, we want people to make guarantees to us, but we're not willing to make guarantees to ourselves. And I thought this was so powerful because as you know, I'm a fan of, you know, saying you're going to do something and actually doing it. And like what I really got thinking about is just like how 
many times we let ourselves down. I've been guilty of this. I know a lot of you listening to this, you may be, you know, guilty as well, right? You say you're going to do something. You say you're going to get below a certain body fat percentage by this date. And, you know, you, you let yourself down. You don't show up. You don't do the work required. But then when it comes to other areas of our lives, we want guarantees. We want a money back guarantee. We want, you know, to be able to have those refunds for other things. And this could be for other services you're asking for. This could be for like, you know, when you buy something in life, I just, and I'm kind of like adding on to this quote, but I just thought how crazy it is that we like, we never make those guarantees to ourselves. And it could be for a number of reasons, even as I reflect on myself, like sometimes it could be a fear thing, right? There's sometimes that, you know, speaking of that challenge, I didn't want to commit to this one that uh, I had, you know, um, coming for me, which was a bench press against someone else. Cause I didn't want to make that guarantee. Like I was a bit worried, you know, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to fulfill it. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to win. Right. When it comes to other challenges, I'm like, I'm always on board. I'm like, I know I can do this. Like I, it's an easier one. Like I can hundred percent do it. So the main thing is that like, you have to ask yourself what guarantee am I going to make to myself and how am I going to hold myself or have that other person such as Josh, such as all of our amazing other coaches, like hold me to that, you know, stop going around asking for all these guarantees to every single thing like in your life, but ask guarantees to yourself. So I just want to share that. I thought it was fire and um, yeah, that's all. Yeah. If you actually want to see change, you got to be able to commit to yourself. And that's where I love, I always like to congratulate someone who reaches out for coaching because it can be uncomfortable vocalizing that, as I said earlier, making it real, sharing it with someone by taking that first step that can be like a mountainous step compared to everything else. And I always like to tell people you've done the hardest part of your transformation because after that, I'm there to take care of them. Like we have 4,000 plus transformations for a reason. And we actually have a money back guarantee for a reason. Like we're so confident in what we've done. We've done this over 10 years with so many people and we built it out to be truly custom and successful for everyone that we just guarantee and know it's going to make change. It's just up to you to make that step and to show to yourself that you're serious. If you just say, I want it, I want it, I want it, but you don't ever do anything for it, you're not going to get anywhere. Now we're going to go ahead and jump into my quote. And that is, if we're facing in the right direction, all we have to do is keep on walking. So simple, but so amazing because in a journey, and I'm, I'm so big on this, it's easy to get in the semantics. I've actually been getting back to making YouTube videos and I made one recently on how to gain more muscle. And like one of the easiest things to be upset about is not being instantly at our destination. But when we know we're doing the right thing and we continue to move towards it, the speed of how we get there doesn't matter. And of course you can get there really fast, of course you can't, but the person who continues moving towards they need to be will destroy that person who stops and gives up every time. So anything in your life, whatever your goal is, whether it's like a career aspiration, a work aspiration, a fitness aspiration, especially like as long as you keep moving forward and you make a conscious effort to improve and get towards there. Like lately, I've really been dialing in. Like if you know anyone, if you invest in a trainer yourself, like let's use you as an example, you invest in a trainer, you go to the gym consistently, you go when you don't feel like doing it, you go when you feel like doing it. You make an effort to eat healthier, you log your food. There's a couple days you mess up, but you consistently make strives and efforts to get better. And you do this for a year. There's no chance. There's literally, it's almost impossible that you won't look significantly better than you do now. That's how simple it is. And that's without worrying about a million different factors, like optimum training heart rate zones and supplements like that's not what really matters but keep what really matters is knowing you're going in the right direction and if you start to veer from that getting back on it and doing those basics to see that result so i think sometimes taking something complex and making it simple is an easier way and a more exciting way to look at a problem so if we're facing the right direction all we have to do is keep on walking. I love that because like the first thing is you have to start, like in order to know that you're facing that right direction, you just have to get moving to be able to know that. It kind of reminded me recently, I was um, traveling and I was like using Google Maps a ton to walk and I found like, I'm kind of not that great with directions, but I found that I'm like, do I go this way? Do I go this way? And I'm like, I'd stand there and I'm like, okay, if I start walking, I'm gonna figure it out. And then I figured out I was on the right direction and if, or I was going the right direction. And if I wasn't, I would just go back and back backtrack and similar to your journey like you just have to get started and you just have to start to take action you know imperfect action will always beat that person who just stands there and does nothing and never takes action so that was a fantastic quote from coach josh and i'm really glad he mentioned that today now we're gonna get into our thoughts and this is just one thought i wrote down i like to see food as being having three costs so 
is a monetary cost most often, a physical cost, and a mental cost. And all too often, we think food has no cost. So it's just very easy. Even yesterday, we were out at a buddy's. It's like, I got pumpkin pie. I hit my calories. I was done. And I decided to not have that pie. Why? Because it's going to have a physical and mental cost. The physical cost for me will be I'll be over my macros. The next day, I'm going to feel spent over. I didn't honestly really want this pie, to be honest. And I would just be eating it to have something that tasted good for two seconds. Mentally, it would have a cost where it would make me realize and compromise my values of hitting my macros taking my goals serious and really sticking to what i say which is me wanting to win out that day and that could have its own effect another example when you're out sometimes it can cost a lot it can physically cost a lot and it mentally can cost a lot so i really challenge people to kind of look deeper about this and really understand what you want with food now if you're out somewhere you have a really fantastic opportunity i've hit my calories and i'm comfortable having that slice of pie and i'm totally fine with the costs that come alongside it and to me it's something really special i really want it it's entirely different but all too often it's easy even just you're out with a big group and people are ordering stuff and you just go oh sure i'll do it and you just see it as like being a cost of like a little bit of money or whatnot it actually can carry past that into like your day-to-day -day life. It's a little bit of an abstract thought, but I do find this makes it easier to say no when you're at your calories or to the extra junk you don't need or like a second or third helping of something you know you shouldn't be having because looking at it this way is so important. And like, especially with the physical and mental sides, like when you have a ton of food, you get like a headache, it ruins your sleep, your digestive's all a mess. Like it can carry a lot more than just the worth, in my opinion, of like enjoying something tasty for 10 seconds. And you can absolutely still enjoy food within reason. We eat a ton of good food using flexible dieting and 80-20 rule. And this is just something extra I wanted to throw out because I know people will reach for this for quick comfort, but there are expenses associated with it. Yeah, and I, I like that because there it's something to think about for sure. Even myself, I sometimes can struggle, like even, you know, similar to that thing Josh mentioned, monetary, physical, mental. There's some things that are in front of us that are like free and uh, and a lot of people don't realize, but, you know, the physical and mental, it just, it could take a toll, right? You know, you're at a buffet or, you know, you're, you order something or you don't order something and people are um, ordering stuff and you're just like, oh, well, I don't have to pay for it or whatever. It's like someone brings it into work. And even like we were at UFC recently and, um, you know, there's a buffet and that was awesome. You know, enjoyed some good food. There's a free, like there's a bar and like we, you know, we'll talk about this after we haven't drank in, you know, uh, six months now, which has been great, but it's like so easy to just be like, oh, I'm going to, I got to get my money's worth and like just have all these thoughts where it's like, you know, it's like cheap and like you're not having to pay for something, but then it's just like, it takes such a big toll on how you feel, your results. And I think this is something a lot of people can improve. And I know this because I've been there as well, like trying to get my money's worth or trying to, you know, make the most of it or just like I'm like oh well it's there I may as well have it and I think as you go down that path you just constantly make bad decisions because it's just a mindset thing it's just like oh I have to have it it's here my doctor that I worked for brought in the donuts like well I want to be nice like it's here so yeah just wanted to mention that as well and my big thing here I have in caps lock and bold in front of me no more average goal setting. So it is the start of a new month. If you're listening to this, it's you know a couple days in, right? It's, it's still plenty of time to accomplish some great goals. We're in the last quarter of the year and Josh and I were talking today. I've just been like setting average goals. Like I sat down, I just sat down with very uh, easy to accomplish goals and I just, it's, I'm not a fan of it. You know, I had to catch myself. Josh had to say, listen, we gotta, we gotta step it up here. And I, I love that because like, it's so easy to just do what you're comfortable with. And I love the quote of if your goals aren't big enough, or if your goals don't scare you, they're not big enough. So as I set my goals for this month, I now I need to go back as we're, you know, filming this today's October 2nd. And, you know, I need to revamp and be like, okay, what else am I going to set? That's going to scare me. That's going to cause me to take action, you know, hit me, help me hit that 315 bench press, you know, get to my goal with the DEXA scan, like, you know, just build the business the way I want to. Like, there's just a lot of times I set very like kind of realistic goals, which can be good. But I just think that most people, myself included, like you have to catch yourself and just like set those goals that are going to scare you and force you to take more action. And um, yeah, it's something I need to improve on. So I wanted to share that with you as well. Setting big goals is awesome. It's not about hitting them. Even if you fall short of them, you're going to move so much further when you set small goals that don't inspire you. So that was incredibly well said. And speaking of someone who's been crushing it, set big goals and achieved it, 
Who is our client shout out this week? So this week, we just wanted to do a nice recap of all of our awesome clients who have lost 50 plus pounds in our program. And, you know, I use that number as just a kind of like a starting point here for some people. But, you know, a lot of people don't realize, obviously, we have tons of transformations where people lose, you know, 15 to 20 pounds in 90 days, like absolutely incredible. I just wanted to take some time to shout out those who have dropped over 50. Um, and there's been a ton of them. There's been people here who have been with us for years who have, you know, lost so much amazing weight. Even, you know, Jack with um, Coach Jason, he's lost 130 pounds. Steven is well over 100 pounds. We've got Jeremy, we've got Chelsea, we've got Taylor. So today we just want to do a big recap because it is not easy. Like these people who have showed up, who have, you know, gone through those tough times, like the ones who have lost a lot of weight and we feel very confident in our ability to help, you know, if someone wants to just fix their body recomp and like gain 10 pounds of muscle while losing 20 pounds of fat, hundred percent we can do. Um, we absolutely love and feel we can confidently within no matter what your goal is, like with, if you're trying to lose 50 plus pounds, we can a hundred percent get you there. But what a lot of people don't realize is that these people who have committed and showed up, like they've had to change a lot of their habits. They've had to change their identity. There's been a lot of, you know, back and forth and kind of battling those old habits. And to get to this point where you've lost 50 to hundred to 150 pounds, like it just has taken some incredible work. I wanted to show some credit where credit's due. So we're so proud of you and yeah, keep going. If you have whatever your goal is, if you have five pounds, 10 pounds, a hundred pounds to lose, reach out to us. I promise you, we can get you there. It just is all a matter of having everything dedicated towards your goals, your lifestyle. And I can't wait to help some of you awesome people. Awesome. Now into our second question of the day, is it better to do cardio or strength training first? So 97% of the time, that's a random number, but well over 90% of the time, I would say strength training is always going to come first. The main reason is that most people's goals are to lose uh, or to fix their body composition, which is just to improve the way they look, to tighten up, to tone up. And just that's the reality is most people goal, goal they say, hey, I want to lose fat, I want to build muscle, and I just want to look and feel better. Strength training is going to be the best thing for you. That's what's going to really change your shape. And if you spend way too much time burning yourself out, running 10, 15, 20Ks, or even 5Ks before an intense strength training session, you're not going to put in as much work. Um, you're going to lift way less weight. You're going to be way more fatigued, and it's just not going to be as beneficial. Now, I will say the one time it makes sense to do cardio beforehand would be some sort of endurance based athlete. If you are a marathon runner, if you're preparing for an Ironman or triathlon or anything in that range where your priority um, is going to be that cardio event, then that would make the most sense. Now, I did want to say like, if you warm up for 10 minutes on the Stairmaster, that's totally fine. Like anything like longer, I'm talking 20, 30, 40 minutes where it's like more intense strength training first, but a five to 10 minute walk or Stairmaster before is totally fine. Kyle said it incredibly well. Like the best rule of thumb I recommend to people is just priority first. Whatever your primary priority is, you'll put more energy towards. And the cost of doing like, like let's say you do a quick jog beforehand or 5K or something, you're going to have a lot less effort to get into heavy bench, heavy deadlift, heavy squats. Things are actually going to change your composition. So for most people that have physique-based goals, that's where look, focusing more so on lifting is more important. And theoretically, you can get incredible physique lifting, being in a deficit with calories and doing no cardio. So it isn't strictly necessary. Benefits of cardio are heart health and performance health. So if you are an athlete, this is something you want to think about. Perhaps adding some of that to the end of your workout will be phenomenal. But on the flip side, if your goal is to run a marathon, and you just like looking good prioritize that running first then hop in the gym because your goal there is performance space for the marathon you want to be putting most of your effort there and then whatever you have left you can do some compositional base training yeah like the only time i've ever done the cardio first was getting ready for the marathon stuff and it was just that was the, my biggest focus like i had to put my full effort there and you just you do have to accept like the strength training was more of like a i'm doing it to do it and this is like I'm just, I'm trying to stay as consistent as possible and maintain muscle mass, but it wasn't going to be like, Hey, I'm hitting some crazy PRs or anything. But, um, yeah, that was a fantastic question. I do know a lot of people struggle with this. Um, you know, I even sometimes like, you know, clients I've had to share, like newer clients I had to share the other day and say, Hey, listen, you know, I know that 45 minute walk or like walking isn't the worst. Um, you know, to be honest, but at the same time, just know that like 
when you take too much energy and exp- and spend it, you can only expend it on so many things to a certain degree, right? So it is something to 100% consider when evaluating how to structure things and, and whatnot. And I know sometimes people struggle with getting cardio in after the workout because they want to get out of the gym, their strength training's taken a while, um, whatever the case is. I am a big fan of splitting it up like into different parts of the day if possible. So like even if you're an early bird for strength training and you only have a certain amount of time, but then later on you go on a nice evening walk or whatever it is like that's totally fine like I do recommend doing stuff like that you don't have to be in the gym for three hours and do all of it at once or even two hours right so just something else I wanted to mention awesome now into our third and final question I heard you say something about not drinking alcohol for over five months now on Instagram do you have any tips on how to navigate this I find my friends can always be pushy and whenever I stay away from alcohol for a few weeks I end up breaking my streak I'm going to start off by saying get better friends um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, that, that is a big thing, of course. Um, uh, one thing I will say is being straight up with people is going to be the most important thing. Like if you just kind of uncomfortably mention to people and like, you know, and I'm sure some of you can relate where you just like, you kind of awkwardly say your goals, you kind of awkwardly say what you're doing and you, you back off a little bit and you start with a strong voice and then it kind of just starts to get a little bit quieter cause you're scared and you're nervous tell people what's up. Like even for us, you know, it's been six months now, which is awesome. I didn't realize until now as this podcast comes out and it's been great. I mean, to give you some, like we can, maybe we'll film a full YouTube video on this or something and maybe a podcast, but there's been lots of challenges, you know, Vegas for UFC, there's been different weddings, there's been, you know, bachelor events, there's just been so many opportunities where it's just like you'd kind of give in and just be like, I'll have one. And obviously, we have a great friend group, very um, awesome amounts of people around us. But I will say like, my main thing is just like being straight up with like what you're trying to do, whether you have to say, hey, I'm focused on this health journey. And for this time, I've decided to cut it out. You could even go one step further and say, I don't drink. And that probably would be the strongest thing. And you don't have to have a discussion afterwards. But obviously, for us, like saying it's a challenge, and like we committed to this, and like, there's no way we're backing down is like that's been the easiest thing because people are interested and even people who are drinking heavy around us in the past they're kind of just like oh man like I've done that before like you feel great and you know most people will be like man that's so awesome like what about this like you didn't feel like people are interested to learn people are curious and I think when you have that like conviction and that like you just that explanation and you're just like hey this is what I'm doing it's so much better than just kind of being awkward about it and uh, that's going to be my biggest tip at least for now yeah I find one of the best things you can do is stand up for your beliefs and if you're just given into peer pressure I feel like you're not too cemented in those stances or they aren't serious enough to you and I think people respect when you're just honest with what you want instead of being like oh I, I don't feel like it today like and the challenge is such a good cop out because you can say I'm doing a challenge but it, it's true sometimes like over explaining yourself to make other people comfortable is not necessary and we've spoken about this a lot with like food where it's so easy if everyone else is like overindulging and being ridiculous and you kind of stick to your grind and like get a chicken breast like people be like oh you're too obsessed like why won't you just enjoy this food with us but theoretically you doing what you need to do which is best for yourself should not impact people especially when it comes to like your eating or consumption and really being aware of that Um, another great thing is being a designated driver even just saying hey let me dd like people will come to love that as well but i do find there's a lot of admiration when you really stick to your guns and just try and be consistent and people will start to respect that and build out to that as well and i think it's just hard when people see you changing and sometimes that can bring their own questions about like how they kind of know they want to change but it's uncomfortable to do so so there's a lot of different thoughts here but i think if something's serious enough to you you can find a way to make it count you can also be realistic with it too like perhaps i think some people say oh i know it's not the best for me and they don't want to fully give it up it's like set realistic boundaries and even with clients like i know some clients are like hey every here and there i like to go out celebrate with a few people like me and my girls every three months we'll meet up people from school and we'll get like a glass of wine it's like okay like leave it there have the glass of wine you don't need to have the accompanying cheesecake and three pastas like unless you can make it fit and kind of make that work within your life and then you can do that guilt free and instead of it needing to be a glass of wine and then like 10 tequila shots it's like set those boundaries stick to them stick to your guns and 
once again, I mentioned it earlier, but if you can be someone who keeps your promises to yourself more than anything, it's the best feeling. Like when you say, this is what I'm going to have, this is what I'm going to do, and you can stick to it. It's very freeing too, right? Because you don't go through this cycle of like indulgence for 10 seconds, followed by a ton of remorse and overthinking and being like, why can't I stick to this? Even within this question, that example of I always end up breaking it, like clearly this individual doesn't feel good about it so you have the opportunity to really see it through to look at it at a different light you could try a break for a time and a restart day and you could try a reintegration with balance if it's not a significant issue to you but these are a lot of different points here and i hope that was helpful to a degree yeah there's there's honestly a lot to unpack with this question and um you know even speaking about my quote earlier that guarantee to myself you know josh we both said hey we're going to commit to this like guarantee and i think like when you promise yourself something like no like no matter what happens i'm like you know i will stick to this like there's just it's a non-negotiable i believe in myself i say i'm going to do something i'm going to do it and i think that's where like one of my biggest takeaways because i do find that most people break because of peer pressure even someone recently that i was speaking to who said they had way more alcohol than they were wanting to and it kind of set them back a few days and it was it was it was a lot it was definitely you know not anything like that i would recommend you know if you want to incorporate a beer or whatever you're you're celebrating or a glass of wine or whatever like our clients can incorporate that into their lifestyle still follow a flexible dining approach still see great progress all that great stuff but when it comes out of control i find that a lot of times like it's just peer pressure and i think where you'll really start to see the biggest changes on your journey is to tell yourself and to set that kind of framework i'm not going to give into peer pressure and it's not just about alcohol it's about skipping workouts it's about you know drinking too much it's about overeating and especially if you are surrounded by people who maybe aren't on the same path and whatnot you know whether it's coworkers, family whatever it is you're going to give into peer pressure so much if you allow yourself to and i'm i really like doing something when i want to do it i say i'm going to enjoy myself this is what i'm doing not I have to do it because the others around me are because they're handing me this stuff. Like I think that's where most people struggle on their journey is just constantly giving in. So that's the last thing I want to add here. Well, we just want to go ahead and thank everyone for tuning in today. It really does mean a lot. Fun fact, I just want to share, this is actually my birthday week. And my birthday wish is if you could share this episode or a podcast in general with a friend. We don't ask for much, but that honestly would make mean a lot to me. And actually, that's the number one way people discover podcasts. It's from their friends. So if you made it to the end, you enjoy what we do. If you could share it with a friend one-on-one or share it to your story, that really would mean the world for my birthday. And if you share it to your story, tag me so I can see it. It makes me smile. Like I think that's probably the number one thing that brightens up my day. So if you've been enjoying uh, what we offer here, it would really mean a lot if you take the two seconds to do that. Tag me in it. My Instagram's at Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T. Now get out there, have a phenomenal day, use this information, apply it, and we'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.